I'm on a journey through a country of unbelievable natural beauty, where vibrant rainforests meet pristine beaches. This eco-friendly haven beckons adventurers with its diverse landscape of volcanoes, waterfalls and untouched wilderness. Welcome to Costa Rica. And I'm here in Drake's Bay, gateway to the Cocovado National Park. Drake Bay is a hidden gem located on the northern tip of Costa Rica's Osa Peninsula. It's remote, wild and untamed. The off the beaten path location adds an extra layer of allure and offers a tranquil escape for nature enthusiasts and adventure seekers. It's the gateway to the Cocovado National Park, a 164 square mile national park that's home to 2.5% of the world's biodiversity as well as an abundance of incredible wildlife. Drake Bay's remote location inevitably means it's a challenge to get to, but I can guarantee it's absolutely 100% worth it. The roads in and around Drake Bay aren't paved and they come with a lot of potholes, so unless you've got a four-wheel drive and are used to driving off-road, I don't recommend bringing a vehicle. For the more casual traveller like me, there's two options by boat or by plane. Sansa, Costa Rica's main domestic airline, offers multiple flights a day from San Jose with a flight time of around 45 minutes. Prices can vary depending on season and how far in advance you book. Boat transfers are available from the town of Sierpe, which is easily accessible by car, bus or shuttle. Your accommodation in Drake Bay will be able to help you organise this for about 20 US dollars. The boat meanders its way down the Sierpe River before heading out into the Pacific Ocean and on to Drake Bay. Arriving in Drake Bay by boat is an experience in itself. There's no port or dock so it's a water landing, meaning the boat pulls up on the beach and you hop off into the water and walk to shore. Welcome to Drake Bay. What a journey that was to get here. A wet landing on the beach, um, that was good fun. A short transfer here to the hotel where I'm staying. This is the Cocovado and Drake Bay Inn, which is in the centre of Drake Bay. I'd booked a superior room which was spacious, clean and comfy. It came with a fridge and coffee making facilities, as well as a fairly modern bathroom. The hotel itself was nice and peaceful, and there was a decent on-site restaurant too. This room is absolutely massive, and this was one of the budget options in Drake Bay as well, so this is definite value for money. Important factors for me, air conditioning and a fridge. Um, so it sold me, <laughs> did this hotel. And as well as that, it's got a pool. So if I want to chill out around the pool and stay around the hotel, I can do. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is a very nice room. Let's do the bed test though. Oh. Oh. It passes. Drake Bay has a long, peaceful, biscuit gullard beach. Backed by palm trees, days can be spent here under the sun watching boats come and go. It's picture postcard tropical paradise. Heading west out of town, you've got the Drake Bay hiking trail, which winds its way along the coast linking to several smaller, unbelievably beautiful beaches such as Playa San Josecito. As for the town itself, Tiny town Drake Bay, a couple of bars, restaurants and a supermarket, that's it. Even the road isn't paved, it's gravel. It's just surrounded by nature though, it's absolutely stunning, it's beautiful. After a relaxed afternoon, it was just time for a couple of beers and an early night, ready for the following day's adventure. It is. 5.30 in the morning, um, 
so good morning. I've just got up, I've had a shower, packed my bag. So now it's time to go into the Crocovado National Park. So I've got to be down at the beach for 6 a.m. to get the boat. This should be good. Boats bound for Crocovado National Park depart from Drake Bay Beach at 6 a.m. You can do day trips or choose to do an overnight trip, which is what I did. I booked my trip through Pashico Tours, who are based in Drake Bay. I'll run through costs at the end of the video, so stick around for that. It's about an hour from Drake Bay to Sirena Ranger Station, and the boat really picks up some speed tackling those early morning waves. Despite being a small boat, I didn't feel any seasickness, although there was definitely some bumps along the way. Sirena is another wet landing, and when you arrive you'll need to check in with the park rangers when you get off the boat. There's also some toilets and space here to dry off too. You must have a registered guide in order to visit Cocovado National Park. It's not somewhere that you can just rock up to. Our guide Eric was fantastic. He was knowledgeable, had incredible storytelling, and it felt like he not only enjoyed what he did, but he wanted us to have the very best experience too. There was only five of us in our group. I was here with a couple from Bern in Switzerland and a couple from Portland in Oregon. This made it feel more special and unique. Hiking from the beach to the ranger station, we took many different trails zigzagging the rainforest, spotting some incredible wildlife on the way. Not forgetting this baby caiman resting in a creek just a couple of hundred metres away from the ranger station. I see the water dirt and say, oh, maybe there's something here. It's a little caiman. That's so cool. Sirena Ranger Station is set in a clearing, in what looks like it once was an airfield. It's the only ranger station in Cocovado National Park that you can overnight at. There's a dining room and all meals are served buffet style. Honestly, the food was decent and hearty. Gallo Pinto is served for breakfast and typical Costa Rican casados are served for lunch and dinner. It's not fine dining by any means, but it's a good tasty filling meal definitely needed after a long day of hiking. There's also a small shop on site selling coffees, ice creams and souvenirs, and there's also common seating areas. I really like the seats out on the front porch overlooking the clearing. As well as this, there's a space to charge phones, a fairly clean toilet and shower block, and then blocks for the beds. Everything is out in the open, including the beds that are set out in rows upon rows of bunks. If you're a light sleeper and are thinking of doing the overnight, some earplugs might help, especially to ease the noise from your fellow travellers. Although I absolutely loved sleeping out in the open with the buzz of the jungle around me. For me, it was all part of the experience. The beds themselves are quite comfy and come with a mosquito net, sheets and pillows. This is going to be interesting. It's pretty cool. Just sleeping out in the open. <sighs> Pillows are terrible though. First world problem, I guess. After a few hours of rest, we headed back out on our afternoon hike towards the Sirena River. By this point, the day trippers had all left and we'd seen a lot of animals, 
although one in particular, the tapir, which is Costa Rica's largest land mammal, had eluded us. That was until we got to a trail very close to the river. I couldn't believe it. Next to this small trail through the grass was this sleeping tapir. It was so cool. Loved it. Tapir. So I haven't been anywhere quite like this. This is unbelievable. There's just wildlife everywhere. Can't believe it. And the evening was spent on the beach watching the sun set on a perfect day. What an incredible day. Seeing all different kinds of monkey, wild pig, akuti, koati, and the main one, the tapir. That was cool. Another early start tomorrow, so 4.30. Um, but apparently that's when the wildlife is most active. So yeah, should be good. A 4.30am wake up might seem a bit extreme, but lights out at Sirena is at 8pm and most animals are active in the early morning, so it's definitely worth getting up early. Because of the heat the day before, most of the animals we saw were sleeping, so we headed back to the river in the hopes of catching animals on the move, and we weren't disappointed. We saw this kuati, undeniably a male with the huge cojones, taking a stroll on the riverbank, and then the absolute highlight of the trip for me, this tapir. It swam down the river, got out, and walked along the riverbank right past us. It was incredible to see this strange looking yet gorgeous animal on the move. After a morning spent hiking along the river, it was time to bid farewell to Sirena Ranger Station and Cocovado National Park. Back to Drake Bay. What an adventure. <laughs> Little did I know though, Cocovado had a parting gift for us in the form of this anteater. As we were heading back to the boats, it was just roaming away on the ground and we were lucky enough to watch it cross the trail. Cocovado completed, time to go. Next stop, Drake Bay. It's my last morning here in Drake Bay. Today though I'm doing something a bit different, I'm going to be taking a boat trip out to Kano Island um, which is just off the coast here and I'm going to be doing some snorkeling and getting to see what marine wildlife they've got. Kano Island is a small biological reserve about 10 miles west of Drake Bay and it attracts visitors for its marine wildlife, coral reefs and pristine beaches. The boats for Kano Island depart Drake Bay Beach at 7am and it's about a 45 minutes to an hour's journey out to the island. Again, I'd booked this trip through Pashako Tours and everything was very well organised. I had another great guide and all equipment was provided too. The main beach at Kano Island is a tropical paradise and it's a fab swim spot too. You can find plenty of shade from the sun under the palm trees. 
The snorkeling itself was good fun. I'm definitely an amateur and I haven't snorkeled much at all, but I really enjoyed the experience, especially seeing various fish, several turtles and even a couple of sharks too. Overall, Drake Bay, Cocovado National Park and Cano Island showcased the very best of Costa Rica for me. There was wildlife, a real off the beaten path feel to it, and a sense of excitement and adventure too. The excursions to Cano Island and Cocovado surpassed expectations. My snorkeling trip to Cano Island cost 95 US dollars for the day and included all equipment, a guide and lunch. The overnight to Cocovado National Park cost 345 US dollars. This included return boat transport, a guide, park entrance fees, one night's lodging and four meals too. I paid a deposit before travel and I paid the remainder when I got to Drake Bay by visiting the Pashaco Tours office. As there's no ATMs in Drake Bay, it's a good idea to have enough cash for your trip. It may seem pricey, but it's definitely worth it and I can't put a price on the incredible experiences that I had. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe and let me know in the comments if you're thinking of heading to Drake Bay or Cocovado National Park. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.